Good day, folks. Thank you for joining us here at Your Health. Dr. David Brownstein, the thyroid doctor, joins us again today. Today we want to talk about iodine. Are you getting enough iodine in your diet? We want to talk about his book, Iodine, Why You Need It and Why You Can't Live Without It. You know, this one is so fascinating. I could not put this book down while I was reading it to prepare for this show. And I know you're going to be fascinated by it too. But it's more than just fascination. The topic of this show will empower you to improve your health. I promise you that. I promise you that. So please stay with us for this program today, Iodine. Is that salt giving you enough? Well, we'll find out from the program. But first, let's go to our news, see what's happening in the health world. There may be new help for people with fatty liver disease. In animal studies, researchers at Oregon State University discovered that the omega-3 fatty acid, docosahexaenoic acid, or DHA, is remarkably effective in reversing fatty liver disease. The American Liver Foundation estimates that one in four Americans has non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and its numbers are on the rise. They also report of those with fatty liver disease, up to 40% will go on to develop non-alcoholic steatohepatitis or NASH, a precursor to liver cirrhosis. Folks, fatty liver disease is a real threat to America due to our expanding waistline. And if even a fraction of these souls with fatty liver disease go on to develop NASH and liver cirrhosis, it will greatly tax our already burdened healthcare system. It is fascinating to learn that DHA could help us solve this problem. Previous research has shown that the omega-3 DHA at doses of 200 to 500 milligrams a day is very effective in preventing cardiovascular disease and even dementia. But this study from Oregon State University found in order to reverse fatty liver disease and prevent fibrosis of the liver, it takes two to four grams of DHA daily. That's much higher than the heart disease prevention plan. Now, to help you formulate a more complete plan to combat the effects of obesity on the liver, consider also adding regular exercise, weight loss, and the complete exclusion of high fructose corn syrup from the diet. Add more fiber and start a quality multivitamin and mineral complete with higher doses of vitamin D and, of course, milk, thistle, and probiotics. Now, you have a holistic plan to help prevent disabling liver disease. Well, today on Your Health, Dr. David Brownstein joins us. He is here to discuss an often overlooked nutrient, iodine. What's your status? Are you getting enough? And what is the best source of iodine? Is table salt enough? Well, we will attempt to answer these questions and more. Join us. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. We're so honored to have Dr. David Brownstein with us today. He's an author, lecturer, and renowned expert in holistic family medicine. Dr. Brownstein graduated from Wayne State University Medical School and practices in the Detroit suburbs where he's the medical director of the Center for Holistic Medicine. He's the author of Iodine, Why You Need It, Why You Can't Live Without It. We're going to talk all about this today. This is going to be amazing. Thank you so much, Dr. Brownstein, for traveling all this way to Texas. Thank you for having me, Cindy. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, doctor, for joining us. In your book, you say that iodine is the most misunderstood nutrient. Why is that, doctor? Well, there's so many misperceptions about iodine out there, that iodine is a toxic substance, that we get enough iodine from salt, Mm -hmm. that no one should ever supplement with iodine, that iodine causes thyroid problems. I mean, that's what I was taught in medical school. I've heard all that. I've heard all that. We've all heard that, especially those of us Mm -hmm. who went to medical school. Uh But... Iodine is an essential ingredient that we don't get enough of from our diet, that the vast majority of us are deficient in, that I think its deficiency is leading to this epidemic of thyroid problems and breast problems, ovarian problems, Mm -hmm. uterine problems, and prostate problems. Mm -hmm. Well, honey, I thought we got enough in salt. Well, that's the general notion. If you're using iodized salt, we're getting enough. This isn't true? That is a falsity. It's a falsity, okay. Falsity of conclusion about iodine. Only 10% of the iodine in iodized salt is bioavailable, and people aren't using enough salt, period. Yeah, we're telling everybody, cut back on your salt, so. Well, the body needs huge amounts of sodium and huge Mm. amounts of chloride to run optimally. Now, I'm not a big fan of refined salt because it takes all the minerals out of salt. I think people should use salt, but they should use the right kind of salt, which is unrefined salt, and then supplement with iodine because there's very little iodine in unrefined salt. When you say unrefined, is that like sea salt? Well, sea salt, all salt can be characterized as sea salt since it all came from the ocean at some time. I would say uh, examples of unrefined salt include Celtic brand salt or Mm -hmm. Redmond salt. Mm -hmm. Those are pretty 
inexpensive, good sources of unrefined salt that contain a lot of minerals in them that I put actively put my patients on yeah. and tell them to use. Yeah. I love to use the Celtic salt, and I think it, it tastes great better. Flavor. Yeah, it does. It does. But even if it's iodized, it's not enough. It's mm -hmm. clearly not enough. Okay. Not in okay. today's toxic world we live in. Help us understand what iodine does in our bodies. So iodine concentrates in the glandular tissue. So when we ingest food with iodine or take an iodine mm -hmm. supplement, it goes preferentially to the glands of the body, like the thyroid, mm -hmm. the breasts, mm -hmm. the ovaries, the uterus, and the prostate. And iodine is used in those tissues to maintain a normal architecture of the glandular tissue. What that mm -hmm. means is if we have enough iodine, the architecture of the thyroid and the breasts and the ovaries and the rest of the gland tissue mm -hmm. is normal. Well, when iodine deficiency comes into play, this tissue starts to get disrupted. And the first thing that happens is you get cysts to form in the tissues. And if it goes on for a longer period of time, those cysts become hard and not more nodular. You like fibrocystic breast? Absolutely. That that's, is so common. That's iodine deficiency, and that's occurring in over 80% of women right now. Um, and wow. if, if it goes on, the cysts become nodular. If it goes on, they become hyperplastic, which is a fancy yeah. term for precancerous. Right. And if it goes on, it becomes cancer. And studies have shown in, in, in test tubes, animals, and humans that iodine can rectify this change this continuum wherever it catches it and bring the tissue back to normal. Okay. Really? Uh, help me understand, how much iodine a day does it take to prevent a goiter? You know, swollen gland here. Well, this is where iodized salt has come into play. And the reason salt was iodized about 90 years ago was to prevent goiter, which was occurring at epidemic rates across the United States. So iodized salt is effective to prevent goiter or swelling of the thyroid. Okay. The problem is, in today's toxic world, it's not providing enough iodine for the rest of the tissues of the body to maintain their normal architecture. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're seeing so many problems with breast tissue and ovarian tissue, uterine, prostate, and even thyroid so, tissue. So you're saying that the increase in breast cancer, in part at least, is due to this prevalence of iodine deficiency. I would absolutely say that. And, you know, one of three men eventually will get prostate cancer. You're saying that's playing a role in that as well. The studies aren't as clear with the prostate as okay. it is with the breast, but I would say the answer to that is correct. That yeah. my answer is yes, you're well, right. Well, you really have a problem. Okay. Go, ahead. Oh, go ahead. Do you have a question? Well, I mean, just this is a whole new topic to me. Yes. I mean, I just this it's is new a, territory. This is a brand us. new day. So your iodine levels—that's not something your body can get without an outside source, i.e., yeah, dietary supplementation. You don't make it. You don't store it. Right or wrong? We were designed to get iodine from our food. The problem is our food supply has been stripped of iodine. So... And our food supply has these toxic chemicals in it that push iodine out of our body. So we're, we're okay. I call it a double whammy of iodine, where we're not getting enough and we're exposed to all these chemicals in our right. food that are pushing iodine right. out. So what I'm getting at is it's not age specific then. So we're not saying we go along in life, we're healthy, 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 healthy. Oh. When I'm 50, I start declining my levels of iodine or the way I use it or whatever. We're saying that everybody, cradle to the grave. We need iodine at all iodine. times in our lives. Yeah. And, and can't get enough. And it's very difficult in today's world to get enough from our food supply. Well, you mentioned in your book that one third of the world's population lives in iodine deficient areas. But does this occur in the United States? Absolutely, it occurs in the United States. Um, I live in Michigan which in the old, you know, 100 years ago was known as the goiter belt because a vast majority of the population was suffering from swollen thyroids because really? our soil's very iodine deficient. That goiter belt rides across the whole central United States all the way down, including your state, yes. Texas. Yes, um, there's a lot of food produced in all these states. There's so a lot that of food, food is low in iodine as well? That food's low in iodine. Okay. And food on the coast near the ocean should be have a higher iodine content. The problem is that our exposure to pollutants has pushed iodine out of that food and we're getting less iodine now than we did 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. I wonder if you can treat your soil with iodine if you garden. Absolutely you can. That's what the Japanese have done. They treat their soil with seaweed, which is a good source of iodine, oh, yeah. and their food has much more iodine in it. Uh -huh. See, that's uh -huh. another reason to have a hothouse. That's my new project. Okay, so we have depleted soils. Give us the other reasons why iodine levels are dropping. Depleted well, soil. Well, the United States government's own nutritional and health examination survey has shown iodine levels have fallen 50 over 50 percent in our entire population over the last 30 years. Uh -huh. Now remember, that's during the time that we're iodized salt still available. So yeah. something's happening that is depleting iodine in our bodies 
and we're not getting enough in, and the consequences are, are severe. The consequences are thyroid problems, breast problems like fibrocystic breast disease and breast cancer, prostate problems, ovarian problems, uterine problems, adrenal problems, wherever iodine is supposed to concentrate. So if you don't have a, if you're really low in iodine, you can get a goiter. But it doesn't take much iodine to prevent the goiter. We're talking about prevention of cancer, other types of thyroid disease, et cetera. With, with the higher levels, we have protection from other problems. That's absolutely okay. true. Okay. So okay. for example, autoimmune thyroid illness, Hashimoto's and Graves' disease mm -hmm. is occurring at epidemic rates right now. It is. Conventional medicine has no answer for Hasn't why it clue. occurs. Hasn't a clue. Uh -uh. It's, what's interesting is if you look at all the studies on autoimmune thyroid disease, you cannot induce autoimmune thyroid disease in animals unless you make them iodine deficient oh. and give them, usually they give them a substance that takes iodine out of their body or disrupts iodine in their thyroid. Wow, amazing. Okay, we read <clears throat> in your book, uh, you, you talked about things that take the place of iodine. It will push it out of the system. Uh, for the chemists, it's the halides. Okay, explain this concept of things that push the, the iodine out of our bodies. So we learn in chemistry about mm -hmm. competitive inhibition, and the halides are a class of chemicals, group 17 in the periodic table, that contains bromide, fluoride, chlorine, and iodine. Hey, wait, wait, fluoride? That's in the water, it keeps my teeth strong. Well, that's what they say, but that's never been proven. Well, explain, we gotta understand this. Fluoride's a poison that poisons hundreds of enzymes in the body. There are no studies that prove that fl uh, fluoridated uh, water supply has less cavities than non-fluoridated water supplies. In fact, most of Europe has taken fluoride out of their water supplies because they've read the studies and understand yeah. that fluoridation of the water so does not do anything for cavities. Every sip of municipal water I drink with fluoride is pushing a little more iodine out of my system. Am I getting that right? You're getting that right, oh. and it's poisoning the receptors that, that need to bind iodine. So it just it's another double whammy that makes it worse. Bromine. So, bromine is in that family as well. The halides, yeah. Okay. And bromine, if you get enough bromine in your body, it pushes iodine out and binds to where iodine is supposed to bind to. Now, my partners and I have tested a lot of people for bromine, um, nearly a thousand people, and we found every single patient tested, regardless of their health status, uh -huh. some have been sick, some have been healthy, are toxic in bromine. Okay. And generally, the people that are sicker have higher bromine levels than people that, are not, that aren't sick, but everybody has high bromine levels. Uh -huh. Bromine is found in our food supply in breads and pastas and cereals. It's found in uh, mattresses and clothing and baby clothing. Mattresses. It's used as a fire retardant. And ah. the government mandates that mattresses and couches and curtains all have brominated sure. chemicals in them to prevent fire, but which has never been shown to prevent fire anyways. Oh, but it's also goodness. in all our computer equipment and iPods and things like that. So let's go to our break and then we'll talk more about things in our environment that are displacing iodine out so we can't use it as well. We're building the case as to why you need to supplement iodine. We'll have more when we return. We're back everyone and if you're just joining us we're talking today with Dr. David Brownstein about iodine. He's got a fascinating book, Iodine, Why You Need It, Why You Can't Live Without It. Yeah. Well Dr. Brownstein this is just amazing. We were talking about bromine and how elevated levels of bromine are in so many people and so many people you tested they were toxic and I'm thinking well why what could it be in that I'm ingesting well Cindy it's in it's in most bakery products such as breads pasta and cereal um, flour has been brominated to allow it to get through the machinery a little bit easier now in the 1960s, it was iodinated bread, so they actually put iodine in it, and people were getting... That would be a good thing then. That would be a good thing. That would people be were getting more iodine back then. And for some reason, which is unclear, in the early 1970s, it was mandated that they take out iodine from bakery, from flour. Probably saved them a half a penny a loaf. And put bromine in. Yes. And really, that's when, if you look at uh, studies on thyroid problems and breast problems, that the rates started to climb after that. And I think we're feeling the effects of it today. So people that ingest you know, d people like different kinds of foods. People that ingest higher levels of foods that contain it are going to be toxic. Anything that's ingesting brominated flour will have it, and most of the bread products out there have it. Okay. And it's not just bread products. It's in some drinks like Gatorade products. And well, what's that got Mountain to do Dew with has, athletic hydration? It doesn't. <laughs> and Mountain Dew also has brominated vegetable oil. 
and hopefully these companies will realize their mistakes and pull the bromine out because so the, what they'll say is well we have the FDA approved level the the FDA does approve lots of different oh, yes, chemicals they do. oh yeah and you can have this much yeah. Well, if you take this much, it's toxic, but you can have this much. So you take five different products, and then you get that much. Well, you know, Cindy, there's no therapeutic right. value for bromine known in the body. There's no benefit that only we poison. know of. Only poison, right? To put bromine in yeah. anything. There's no reason for it. And it should be, if the FDA was working for us, they would pull it out, out of our food sources. Of everything. And say, we can't do this anymore. And so wow. you're saying with the extra bromine, it pushes out the iodine so we can't use it, basically. So that's why our iodine levels have fallen over 50% in the last 30 years. That's part of it. You write about perchlorate. This is important. What is that? Does it do the same? So perchlorate's also in that family of halides we talked about before. Okay. It's a chlorine derivative. And manufacturing processes for fireworks and for bomb manufacturing. Rocket fuel, too. Rocket fuel. It's a byproduct of those processes. And the government allows these companies to just dump it back into the sewer system when, they're, when they make it. And what happens is the wastewater treatment plants don't fully remove it, so we yes. get it back in our water supply. Do they test your water for it? I, I don't believe most companies are testing the water. Most cities are testing the water for it. They, they believe that small amounts are safe when the studies clearly show perchlorate levels going up. Okay, so we have the perchlorate, the bromide. Are there any others that are? We talked about the fluoride. Oh, right, that, fluoride. That's another halide. Everybody's drinking that almost. Yeah, everyone's drinking that. And that's, that's another thing that's, that's whacking well, no iodine wonder. in the body. I think we solved the reason why our, our iodine levels are dropping. When you Absolutely. can't find, it's really, really difficult to find toothpaste without fluoride. Oh, is it? Even the natural companies isn't have started putting it back in. It is tough. Yeah. And oh, my goodness. Okay, so if we don't have enough iodine, you may get a goiter, but that's not as common as it once was because we've iodinized salt and we have enough for most people to avoid the goiter. But it can also lead to other thyroid disease when you don't have enough iodine. My connection here that I want you to explain, I really want you to understand this. I want everyone to understand this. When our iodine is removed, when we don't have enough, it can make you susceptible to breast cancer and prostate cancer. Help us understand this. So fibrocystic breast disease, which mm -hmm. is affecting over 80% of women, is iodine deficiency, period. Okay. And I've treated hundreds, if not thousands, of women over the years with fibrocystic breast disease just with iodine, and their fibrocystic breast disease go away, goes away. Wow. Fibrocystic breast disease is a precursor to iodine I mean, is, is a precursor to breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And basically it's in that continuum of iodine deficiency we talked about in the first right. part of the show. Right. And all this can be reversed if, and, and avoided if women would maintain adequate iodine levels. Well, how do you do that? Uh, in today's world, you're gonna have to supplement with iodine. And you know, my, uh, I've been doing research on iodine for over 10 years now. And the Japanese ingest about 12.5 milligrams of iodine per day, because they eat a lot more seaweed in their diet and a lot more fish in their mm -hmm. diet. We yes. estimate that they're ingesting about 12.5 milligrams. So they have markedly less fibrocystic breast disease, markedly less breast cancer, markedly less prostate cancer, probably related to that. If I use, say, three grams of salt or so a day and it's iodized, would, would that get me close to that 12, 13 milligrams of iodine? Not even close. Not even close. So the RDA for iodine is 150 micrograms per day. Micro, oh, so that's a lot of zeros first. That's a lot of zeros. <laughs> so this is 100 times more than the RDA for iodine we're talking about. And that's safe to do? The Japanese do it. They do it every day I have not anyway. seen problems with patients that do it. If patients have a specific thyroid problem, a, a toxic goiter that could take up iodine, that could be a problem with taking iodine, but that's very rare. Yeah. People who, do the, who have that, when they take their first dose of iodine, they'll get a little hyper and a little nervous and jittery. They won't be able to take it till they get that thyroid problem fixed. Uh -huh. The rest of us should be able to take iodine without problems. You know, doctor, in your book, you give case studies of people who come and you evaluate them and they're low in iodine and you replace that and you treat that. And some of these patients are breast cancer patients who are looking for an alternative. They, mm -hmm. they don't wanna do chemotherapy, radiation and surgery, and I understand that. And you have described several cases of remission to cancer with iodine therapy. Well, look, we have one in eight women with breast cancer in the mm -hmm. United States right now. It's so, a, that's wrong. I mean, that can't be, that's a bad thing. There is very little research going on on what's causing this. There's yeah. a lot of research on how to treat it, but that's mm -hmm. too late at that point. Right. And 
the research seems clear to me we should be investigating the toxic halides and we should be investigating iodine deficiency because I've seen many women with breast cancers or fibrocystic breast disease, their disease starts to halt when they get their iodine levels up. That's amazing. That is amazing. Now, I don't know how much time we have. I got so engrossed in our discussion. Uh, we have a couple minutes. What I would like to know is for the people, because I mean, I've lost personal friends to breast cancer. Yes. It's, it's just, it's just, I can't even begin to go there. It's so, so widespread. We want to stop it and we want to stop it today. So I need to tell my friends, you need to start supplementing with iodine. That's just a given. Well, right? I think, I think th one of the best pieces of advice you could give someone is to work with a health care practitioner knowledgeable mm -hmm. about iodine, let them get tested, and then supplement after but that. But what if there's not one in their town? Yeah. That's, that's the we problem. We don't all have that you next door. So yeah. look, I think we can look at the Japanese population and say if they're ingesting 12.5 milligrams per day as a population, which many areas of Japan are ingesting more than that. And they have low breast cancer rates. Right. Low fibrocystic okay, breast, Okay, so we're going to go ahead cancer. and supplement with with it. How, do we, how are we going to know that once we started supplementing, our levels are where they need to be for protection? Well, number one, women with fibrocystic breasts are going to tell because the fibrocystic breasts are going to go away. Yeah. Number two, men with prostate cysts and nodules are going to get checked and they'll right. find their prostate gets better and the prostate function gets better. People will feel okay. the difference because they get more energy. Um, their fatigue gets better. The, the, the best thing that I've seen in holistic medicine after 20 years of doing it is really getting someone's iodine levels up because that's been the best bang for the buck that I have observed in my patients. Now, you've practiced in, as you call it, the goiter belt, the Great Lakes area. But what about, say, um, Texas or California? That's not the goiter belt, is it? I mean, they'd probably be okay. Is this a theme um, for everybody? Theoretically, if you're near the coast, where the oceans are, mm -hmm. there's more iodine in the soil and more iodine coming off the ocean sure. as the waves crash into the shore. However, I've talked to doctors around the country who are testing people. They're seeing the same low levels that I'm seeing. And it's Even because if, of our food supply yes. and, the, and the bromine and the fluoride toxicity mm -hmm. that we're seeing. Okay. Wow. Folks, we live in, an, in a polluted environment. The number of chemicals are too much to list and it's displacing iodine out of our body and being replaced with other elements that can't do the job of iodine, and it's leaving us prone to disease. We'll have more on this topic in just a moment. Well, Dr. Brownstein, I know we do. So yeah. I have a question before we go on in the show. I know there's a lot of doctors out there that really do want to help their patients. They don't know this information. We're going to help them learn it. So you viewers, pay attention to this one. I want you to know this and write it down. So. We said we were going to start taking 12.5 milligrams a day. Mm -hmm. So we're thinking we're getting our supplementation up. Then after, tell me how much time, maybe a month, maybe 60 days, we're going to go back and we're going to ask our doctor to test our iodine level. What test do we ask for? So what you could do as a patient is, number one, get tested before you start taking it. Start okay. taking it and then low. get tested three okay. to six months into it. Okay. Yeah. So the test is an iodine loading test. And it was designed by my mentor in iodine, Dr. Guy Abraham. And basically, you take 50 milligrams of iodine orally, you collect 24 hours of urine and mail a little sample of urine into a lab, and the lab sees how much iodine spills out. Right. Now, the good thing about iodine is that 99% of it you take orally comes out in the urine, so you can just subtract numbers, figure out how yeah. much comes out in the urine, how much you took in, and you know how much your body held on to. Okay. Generally, if you're more iodine deficient, you'll hold on to more of that 50 milligrams. Yeah. So as you become more iodine sufficient, when you take 50 milligrams, you'll pee out more iodine. Right. When you pee out 95% of the iodine or about 45 milligrams and hang on to five milligrams, that seems to be the normal number for most people. Okay, so would just about any laboratory be able to do this for you or do you have to go to a specialized doctor who will mail it to a specialized lab? It's a specialized test and there are a couple of labs which I mentioned in the book okay. that'll do this. Okay. Um, but not every laboratory will do this. So then you would need to work through your doctor and then he would mail it to the special lab because they won't take it directly from a patient yeah, without right. a doctor, right? No, you can do an iodine loading test without going to a doctor and get the results sent back to you and then take the results to okay. your doctor. You don't and need that a doctor. Information is in the book. You don't need a doctor to do this Okay, test. good to know. Oh, that's really good then. You're right. You know, I'm still stuck on these things in our environment that are displacing the iodine. And I came to realize that, and you write about this in your book, there's several medications that we have that have fluoride 
connected to it, bromide, bromine connected to it. And these are common medicines. Do you, can you name some of these medicines? So Prozac is one of the medications. Oh my goodness, Prozac? Has so bromine? Fluoride. fluoride? Has, has fluoride. fluoride. Fluoride? Fluoride molecule. So I would, what I, what I encourage doctors to do when I lecture to them is to look at the chemical structure of these drugs before they prescribe them. If they have toxic halides in them, yeah. which would be bromide or fluoride, don't prescribe them. If you look at the drugs that have been pulled from the FDA, pulled by the FDA over the last 20 to 30 years, mm -hmm. most of the drugs have toxic halides as part of their genetic, part of their chemical makeup. Yeah. Why do you think they're in there to start with? Because these halides cross the blood-brain barrier easily and they can get into it's the brain. And, and, and they're, they're stable for the drug manufacturers to work with. So we're taking medicines to improve our health and they're laced with poisons. It's true. Laced with poison. And it makes thyroid problems worse, breast problems worse, and you know, it just nice. adds to the mess that we're in as a population. Me. Okay, hmm. here's a scenario. A patient comes to you, have all the features of hypothyroidism. You uh, do your tests and, and, and you start them on a little armor thyroid, okay? And they don't respond very well. What happens to this patient, and I know there's a thousand people listening right now in that same scenario, could that person who's not responding well to armor have an iodine deficiency? And what would happen if they took iodine? Richard, it's a great question. Yeah. Because 20 years ago, after you know, beginning my holistic practice, when I started diagnosing all these thyroid problems, my first step would be to put them on natural thyroid hormone. Yeah, sure. And a good portion of people got better. There was no sure. question. Um, now, 20 years later, what I found is that it's much more important to get their iodine levels up first before putting them on thyroid oh. hormone. And I don't have to use as much thyroid hormone. I don't use nearly the doses uh, I used before. And I don't have as many people taking it at all because once they have enough iodine, their thyroid, their adrenals, the ovaries can start oh. making the right hormones in the right amounts. Because you got to keep in mind, you can't make any hormone in the body without adequate iodine. Yeah. So what you're saying it. then is if your iodine levels are sufficient mm -hmm. and you are taking something like Synthroid or Armor, whatever, one of those drugs, those, you may start being able to regulate down because your thyroid function is going to normalize somewhat. Well, so what, you may be able to take less of those. You probably will be able to take less because what happens is if you're iodine deficient and you're given thyroid hormone, mm -hmm. you increase the metabolism, metabolic rate of the body, okay. you make iodine deficiency worse. So there are studies that show oh, that yeah. women who take thyroid hormone for over 10 years have a higher breast cancer rate than women who don't take thyroid hormone. And it's because it's really? making this iodine deficiency problem worse. Wow. Seriously. That makes sense. That absolutely makes sense. That's amazing. Yeah. Let's go to our break. We'll have more in just a moment. Dr. Brownstein, you hit a nerve with me. People who take thyroid replacement like your armor, your, you know, synthroids, whatever those are, have a higher incidence of breast cancer when they take it for 10 years or longer. How in the world can that be? I just, I don't understand how that could be. Well, you know, Cindy, I read those studies before I got involved with iodine and I would pour through them and I couldn't come up with a good conclusion yeah. why that was the case. Befuddled. Until I came until up this. Mm -hmm. with an iodine, that people were iodine deficient. And, um, what happens is when you take thyroid hormone, you increase the metabolic rate of the yeah, body, right? yeah. and you increase it the body's you need, need more iodine, iodine then. Right? Yeah. So you're making iodine deficiency worse. And okay. so what I look at my patients who have hypothyroidism is mm -hmm. I look at their iodine status. So right. I never start anyone on thyroid hormone without assessing their iodine status. Sometimes I start them together, but I will not start thyroid hormone without assessing iodine status. So the take home message before we go on is that we really want everyone to start the supplementation, but we want them, if possible, to get their level tested, their so, iodine tested. So if right? you're on thyroid hormone and you take okay. iodine, one thing the viewers need to keep in mind is, I call this the rule of thirds. If you're already on thyroid hormone and you start iodine, a third of you will find you'll need to lower your thyroid hormone by half. A third of you will find you need to stop taking your thyroid hormone, and a third can continue the thyroid hormone at the original dose. And most people feel better with the iodine, but I don't know who those thirds are until you start taking yeah, the iodine. Yeah, okay. you know? So if you start getting symptoms of hyperthyroid, palpitations, nervous jittery, just start cutting your thyroid just back. Cut it down. And many so, times you'll find you don't need to take it once you get the iodine. Here's another out. common scenario. A person goes to the doctor for hypothyroid-like symptoms. They're put on a dose of thyroid hormone replacement. They feel better for a while, but then not enough. They add, add a little more, a little higher. And over the years, they get a little higher, a little higher that person could be iodine deficient. 
Absolutely. That's how I used to do it. Okay. I don't do that anymore. My th Spare them that, uh, that trial and error. That's, right. that's true. And my okay. thyroid dosing now is markedly lower than it was 15, 20 years ago. We oh, need yeah. to get this book to all the teaching hospitals, oh, and the yeah, teach medical centers. And all the family doctors and everybody taking care of sick people. Folks, get this. Conditions treated with iodine, this is both historical and through the uh, literature, okay? ADHD, at attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder, atherosclerosis, heart disease, breast disease, uh, fibrocystic breast disease, Dupuytren's contracture. You know, if you have it, you know what it is. <laughs> Excessive mucus. Iodine used to be a treatment for uh, bronchitis and mucus, colds. In the old days, that's how mm -hmm. they treated it. That's how they iodine. treated it. So can we assume that the iodine helps to boost the immune system? Absolutely it does. As wow. you can hear, my patients like to share with me, and I'm getting over my holistic cold from my practice. Yeah. First thing I do is I trip up my iodine dose for a couple of days. Fatigue, goiter, hemorrhoids. Yeah, avoiding the uh, constipation, right? Regularity get, takes care of the headaches. Tell us a little about headaches. We have so many people with daily chronic mm -hmm. terrible headaches. What I find with headache patients is that over 80% of them have hormonal imbalances and the okay. vast majority of them are thyroid imbalances. Once you get that hormonal imbalance corrected, those headaches get markedly better or go away in the vast majority of people. Wow. And that's where iodine comes into play because it helps all the glands and all the hormones mm -hmm. get situated better. Hypertension, infections, keloids, terrible exaggerated scar formation, particularly in African Americans. Could, is this is a sign of iodine deficiency? It is a sign of iodine deficiency. I did not know that. And you can put iodine right over wounds, you know, surgical wounds, and it will uh -huh. prevent keloids from forming. Wow, mm. this is powerful. Uh, liver disease, nephrotic syndrome, ovarian disease. Here's the ovary again. Ovaries have high levels, supposed to have high level of iodine. Ovaries have the second highest iodine in the body next to the th second highest concentration of iodine next to the thyroid. And oh. if you think about our iodine levels falling 50% in 30 years, guess what's going to suffer? The ovaries, the thyroid, the breasts, you know, all the glandular tissue. Parotid duct stones, prostate disorders, including prostate cancer, okay, sebaceous cysts. I remember in practice there'd be some, particularly young men, mm -hmm. there'd be one cyst after another on their body. This could be a sign of hypoiodinism. Uh, Vaginal infections, thyroid disorders, this is just amazing. And it has a role in cancer. I'm a cancer survivor and that caught my attention and you have many case histories in your book where you talk about people who start to supplement a little extra iodine and their cancer states improve. There's very few substances in medicine that have it's called apoptotic properties. They turn yeah. cancer cells from constantly dividing back into normal cells which have a lifespan. Iodine's one of them, vitamin D is another one that's been shown to do that. But the, the research is pretty clear with iodine and the glandular tissue that it, it's at maintaining that normal architecture. Instead of letting the tissue go out of control, it just maintains some sense of order to the tissue, which is what we want. Before we go to our break, this one is really important because uh, it reflects an action that only you can do, viewer. And that is the association with gluten intolerance and thyroid disease. We need to remind them of that. Our gluten in wheat has been, they bred the wheat pr plants to have much higher gluten now than they did 30 years ago. So our gluten exposure has gone way up. And what I find that people that have thyroid disorders do significantly better to avoid gluten in their diet. And in fact, I think all of us would do better to avoid gluten in our mm -hmm. diet because we're getting too much in right now. Okay. And it's leading to the obesity, autoimmune problem that we're seeing in our country. Um, so there's no question that uh, gluten is, is really directly affecting the thyroid glands in a negative way. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Amazing stuff. Let's do this. Let's go to our break. And when we return, I think you might be interested in supplementing a little extra iodine. When we return, we'll tell you exactly how to do that and what product to look for. We'll be right back. Richard, this is important to get yes, out Yes, it there. is. And as I was reading through this book, I, what I wanted to know is how do I take this? How do I take it? How do I take it? Mm -hmm. So what's the ABCs of supplementing iodine, doctor? So the original iodine supplementation that was available over the counter for uh, over 150 years was Lugol solution. And it's, yeah, it's just liquid iodine. Mm -hmm. And it's got the right mixture of iodine and iodide in it. And it was sold over the counter until about a year and a half ago when the FDA took it off the market. Um, under the pretenses that it is used to make methamphetamine. But it wasn't because it was dangerous to people using it as a proper supplement or anything. Not, not that reason. No. 
No. Others. Even though some doctors believe it's dangerous, but that's not why they took it off the market. Okay. Okay. Y you mentioned iodine and iodide. So there are two forms of iodine, okay. primarily yes. in our bodies, iodine and iodide, and it just has to do with the electron structure of the iodine molecule, but certain tissues of our body like iodine, certain tissues of our body like iodide. So mm. this is a problem with iodized salt. That's the only one type in it, potassium iodide, not the other. That's right. So the thyroid Sinical. likes potassium iodide. Mm -hmm. However, the breasts generally take up iodine. Mm. Uh -huh. So if you're going to use an iodide, iodine, an iodine supplement for whole body iodine, you really want to use one that has both forms of iodine in it. And that's why I recommend okay. either using Lugol solution mm -hmm. or tableted mm -hmm. Lugol solution. So, mm -hmm. so the, you know, iodine doesn't taste good. It doesn't taste good at all. <laughs> There's a tablet form yeah. of this Lugol mm -hmm. solution? Mm -hmm. Now there are a tablet of Lugol solution mm -hmm. where one tablet contains 12.5 milligrams of iodine and iodide. I wrote that down. Yes, I've got that. Now, how do, again, how do we know that that 12 and a half, we suspect that's a very safe and appropriate dose because of... Well, the Japanese, we estimate, take in 12.5 milligrams per day as a whole population. So we have some 100 million people who are basically doing this test for us and have told us this level is safe to do. And we've got, in my office, we've got three practitioners who've been doing this for over 10 years. And for the vast majority of people, it's safe. Now, people can have problems with anything they take, iodine included, mm -hmm. but for the vast majority of people, it's perfectly safe. Yeah. Good, so good. it's not like supplementing with iron where you might feel flushed. Some people get, you know, they'll have a, have a kind of a harsh reaction to first starting to take iron. The iodine isn't like that, right? Some people, if you get palpitations or nervous mm -hmm. or jittery, it's something you probably want to stop and then work with a healthcare practitioner. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's very it's rare so that rare. that happens. What about kids? Can kids supplement iodine? Well, kids are, kids are in the same population we are. They're exposed yeah. to the same toxic allies of fluoride and bromide and chlorine that we are. Absolutely, they need to take iodine. You know, I'm reminded of cretinism. Explain what cretinism is and why it's just so important to get our iodine. So cretinism is severe hypothyroidism, and it occurs from women who are hypothyroid and or iodine deficient while they're pregnant. And then the babies come out with severely low IQs. Well, for study, life. For life. For life. Studies have clearly shown that mothers who ingest adequate amounts of iodine have higher IQ babies. Um, so I, I read in your book 13 IQ points difference. That's the difference between a kid going to college and a kid you having trouble finishing high school. That's a scholarship. Absolutely. You know, we have shared with our audience... Oh, we added them up. 150 or more research uh, studies on vitamin D. Mm -hmm. And we've all been very impressed with the benefit of vitamin D. How does iodine and vitamin D compare? There is no comparison. I have been checking vitamin D levels since 1992 and supplementing people with vitamin D. And I've been checking iodine levels and supplementing people with iodine for the last 12 or 13 years. Iodine far wins out over vitamin D. Mm -hmm. That effective. Wow. It's everybody. People Everybody. get much more positive experiences mm. from iodine than they do vitamin D, hands down. So is this something that if you're low in it, and most of us are, 96%, it appears, mm -hmm. if I take it, how long before I can feel the benefit? Is this something you feel? A lot of people do feel better with iodine right yeah. away, mm -hmm. and it's usually within a week See, or two. that's encouraging. Because it gets their thyroid working better and gets their adrenal glands working better and it perks their energy levels up. Uh -huh. Plus, it has anti-infective capabilities to it. There's no bacteria, virus, yeast, or parasite that's been shown to be resistant to iodine. That's amazing. So you can think People about when we're low in iodine, often. we yeah. get all these illnesses. So it can help yeah. yeast syndrome and, and chronic uh, recurrent mm -hmm. colds and mono mm -hmm. and all this stuff. It can be, just be tremendous. Well, doctor, I can't remember a program where I've learned more than this one. Mm -hmm. And for that, I'm going to shake well, your hand and ask you, you to come me. back. Right. Can you come back sometime? I would love to come back. Again? Good. Thank you, Thank guys. You. Wow. Isn't this amazing? It is Folks, amazing. Please get a copy. Thank you so much for joining us. Hope to see you again tomorrow right here at your health. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, everyone. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Thank you, doctor. Thank, Thank you. you.